Welcome to Unity Park, a park that will not just be built by me, but five other incredible creators over the next coming weeks. So sit down and enjoy the beginning of the biggest collaborative project Jurassic World Evolution 2 has ever seen. And with that said, hey guys, Legion here and welcome back to Jurassic World Evolution 2 with this incredible project. So whilst I start the first steps of this highly detailed park entrance, let's introduce you to the other builders joining me in this awesome park build. Let's do this in video order, so starting off with the person you must subscribe to to catch the next episode of this park, that is Caesar Creates. Let me introduce to you an incredible Planet Zoo builder that makes each of his builds feel like real places with an incredible way of building really natural habitats and creating convincing zoo layouts. He doesn't play Jurassic World Evolution 2 that much, but when he does, it's for sure an incredible build you shouldn't miss. As the next member of Unity Park, I present Crazy Cat Miri. She's a builder who always manages to translate incredible ideas to this game with clever usages of the items we are given. If you have ever built a waterfall using the snowbrush for example, you can thank her for coming up with this awesome trick. And next we have Jurassic Tom, a builder who you may recognize from one of his many amazing parks. He has brought a lot of cool tricks to this game and always surprises with how well he can translate the theme of his current park in such a limited game. Moving on to Montgomery Rex. Like Thanos, he's collecting not infinity stones, but a huge amount of finished parks. All of his builds are different in a way, with unique ideas each time, but what they all have in common is outstanding pathwork, incredible detail and great habitats. Last but certainly not least, Python X35. In each of his videos he brings incredible patience when placing down hundreds of decorations and great game knowledge to the table. He's probably best known for his insanely detailed ops areas, roads and parking lots that accompany his meticulously planned parks. I hope all of you are just as excited for this as I am, so if you want to keep up with every single episode of this park, this is your time to go down into the video description and subscribe to all of our channels. A new episode of this build will release every Saturday on a different channel until we have gone through the entire, you know, build team twice or maybe three times. It will be incredibly interesting to see all of our different build styles clash but be forced to work together. So now I'm gonna start talking about my entrance build for this park. And as you are already seeing in the speed build right here, I got the honor to build the entrance for this awesome project. And so I tried to do something pretty special. I tried to do build like a big and sort of impressive entrance. And I made like a bit of a star shape. So there's like five uh, points on this plaza. But instead of it being a star with straight lines, I decided to make it, of course, uh, with curves with curved path like I always do with my plazas and then I also later uh, added which you probably can't see right now but I later added a lot of a monorail to this whole structure and that really just ended up giving it a really cool feel and a whole different vibe and I think that was a pretty good decision to uh, do that and yeah in general I think this uh, entrance turned out pretty well it's like a big it's a bigger build for sure and um, probably the, one of the biggest builds that someone will do like in one episode um, usually you are, you are gonna do like one to two habitats in an episode so just like a regular sized build this one of course is an exception because it is the entrance and I decided to make it pretty detailed because uh, you know I want the entrance to be something special and to really give uh, like my best uh, building uh, for this entrance but of course, since this build is not just going to be built by me, I had to give like some a little point, uh, a little like starting point for the next person Caesar creates to where to start uh, his build. So I had uh, on the left side and on the right side I placed two Jurassic Park gates and the idea is basically that uh, the park starts on the left Jurassic Park gate, so you go through that gate and uh, then you get into the park and the idea from uh, at least I thought so uh, was going to be to make the park loop around and then uh, to have it come back through the right Jurassic Park gate with, which is so, um, from the perspective of this plaza it's like turned around so that then when you leave the park and go through that gate uh, you see the front of it and then you go back to the entrance plaza and then you, you know you leave um, in the same building and the park I think that that's like a cool thing to have the park um, end and start in the same area. And I also made two other little connection points um, in this uh, build right here for the other builders to do. Uh, one of them will probably be resolved already in the next episode and that is two little viewing galleries uh, on the left habitat because I thought it would be better to have like a secondary viewpoint uh, that shows a whole different vibe of the habitat um, in the left habitat. And yeah, I think that's also going to be fun if uh, the path like connects to that and again and then the guests go then and are, are like, oh yeah, that's the habitat I've already seen and uh, I can look at it again and they will get like a different viewpoint. Maybe if they didn't see all of the animals, you know, um, 
from their first time on the entrance, they can actually you know, look into the habitat again. And then in the back of the whole plaza uh, where I built like a Jurassic Park gate surrounded by water, I decided to also make a hill. And then on, to on top of that, there's like a one line of path that is lined already with decorations uh, where someone can in the future maybe build like a little plaza and have an area that overlooks uh, yeah, the park entrance. But what I think is quite nice about these habitats, it's a little different uh, thing, a little technique that I tried right here. And I think it turned out quite nicely. I might use that more in the future. Uh, that is to have like little areas um, in the habitat where I just place a couple of rocks and then some foliage right there and I always think that creates really nice areas and sort of like an area it's supposed to represent like a little area where the dinosaurs don't really go and then around that I like using like uh, some kind of dirt or sand brush and I think that creates for a nice look and creates the illusion that the dinosaurs only use certain paths in the uh, habitat and that the other little areas sort of uh, then get to grow more and there are more plants there and uh, there are also some rocks there and the dinosaurs can traverse those of course so that is the reason why those rocks are you know in that why the area is right there around those rocks and i think that looks pretty cool i also did that in the right like i did that in the left and the right habitat uh, the habitat on the right side is for the werosaurus and it's kind of funny the werosaurus has like an animation where it stretches itself um, by lifting like one of its hind legs and that reminds me of one of my cats because one of my cats actually likes to do that and stretch like that and so it's kind of funny that uh, yeah the dinosaur this dinosaur in the game actually has the same animation yeah, the Warzers itself is quite nice, it has like this beak and the plates are rounded, which is pretty unique, so it makes it a really unique stegosaur, and it has some nice skins, so I decided to put it in this habitat, um, and in general I didn't really use any small, uh, that small herbivores in this um in this starting area and these two starting habitats, and instead I actually used only really medium herbivores. Um, but I think it looks quite nice in the right habitat. I also built a little viewing dome and then surround that with rocks like I mostly do. And I always think that surrounding these with rocks uh, makes it sort of feel like it makes more sense because then the guests are more safe. Um, especially, you know, from a werosaurus which has like this uh, st thagomizer that would be quite dangerous for the glass. Maybe it could like destroy the glass. So yeah, that's why I put that there and also surrounded it with the rocks. On the left habitat, I decided for some of my favorite species, for some of my favorite herbivores in the game. Those are the Mutaborosaurus and also the Taurosaurus. The Mutaborosaurus is probably my favorite hadrosaur in the game. I just really like uh, the way it walks, like on its two legs. I like the skins, they look quite nice. And I also like, like uh, the nasal boss that it has. I think that is really cool. So yeah, I, I don't really know too much why, but I just really like it. Uh, it doesn't really have like a crest, but I still think that the skins are good and they're pretty colorful. And then I also have the Taurosaurus, which is in my opinion one of the most underrated species in this game probably, because many people prefer the Triceratops simply because, you know, they know the Triceratops better and it was be in the movie, but like in Jurassic Park and stuff, but I think that the Taurosaurus is just better. Um, of course, it doesn't look like a Triceratops, it doesn't really replace the Triceratops for me that much because it looks like a Taurosaurus still, like a good Taurosaurus design and not really like a Triceratops design. But I think the skins for it are quite nice. It has like a cool frill pattern and the Triceratops in this game just doesn't really have that. It really has uh, boring skins and uh, the, the skins aren't really colorful. Uh, the pattern isn't interesting pretty much at all. And yeah, so that's the reason why I think the Taurosaurus is so underrated because many people don't even give it a chance um, when they think, because they say that uh, they already have the Triceratops, even though in my opinion, yeah, I think everybody should give the Taurosaurus a chance because it is really just better than the Triceratops in this game. But yeah, as I already said, in the left habitat, I also uh, did that little trick with the rocks, so little uh, areas with a, bu a, a bunch of rocks that are just like randomly placed and sort of bunched together. And then I basically use a foliage brush uh, right in the same area. And I think especially in that habitat, that looks really nice. And I also uh, I, like use quite a bunch of like trees, like sparse trees uh, in, yeah, in exactly those little rock areas. And also surrounded the whole habitat with trees. And it uh, ended up becoming really shady, uh, like getting a lot of shade the habitat because of, um, you know, the way the sun is oriented. And I think that that actually uh, makes up for a really, really unique vibe in that habitat. And I think it looks really cool. It's like a habitat with a lot of shade and it's more of like a grassland because there aren't too many trees in the habitat itself. 
and yeah i really like the vibe of that and also has you know two of my favorite herbivores in the game uh, so i think that's a pretty cool habitat i built there but also what you saw me build right there a couple of seconds ago actually i caught most of the footage from that but on the left and right hand side pretty much from um, you know from the perspective when you arrive in the park from the entrance uh, there are like two bigger garden areas where i used again this trick with like the tropical fern and sort of making uh, your own big planter sections and i think that that looks really cool and especially here it created a really nice vibe and i would say that it was worth it but yeah that took a really long time and yeah so i just remember that and this trick in general like it takes a lot of fps it takes a lot of time but i still think that it's worth it and yeah i, I think the result speaks for itself also in the cinematics later as you're going to see i think that trick looks just really cool and it creates a good atmosphere and it works really really well as a guard yeah, now I'm currently, uh, as I was talking about before, I'm building the second habitat on the left side for the Taurosaurus and Motoborosaurus. Um, that habitat is mostly, you know, the same as the one on the right, so I'm going to skip most of that footage. Uh, but I, what another thing I want to say about those habitats exactly is that what I do also on the is that on the outside of the concrete barriers, I line that with the fluffy bush and then a couple of trees also. Um, behind the fluffy bush even and then around that I use a lot of the a lot of rocks and line the fluffy bush with that and I think that also creates a really cool look and it it just makes more sense to me as a habitat barrier because just having like the weird uh, concrete wall there looks really bare and sort of weird and uh, not really like a good ha habitat for the animal but then if you surround it with that it just looks like a little bit of uh, like it still looks like it's man-made and that uh, the, they made an effort to cover it up but it doesn't just look as bare as before. So yeah guys, um, as I previously said, I hope you guys are excited for this project uh, just like I am. Um, I still can't really believe that I got all of these amazing people together and to work with me on this one park and I'm really really excited to see how all of this turns out. Um, so yeah, uh, again, if you haven't done so yet, uh, go, in the co go in the description and subscribe to all of those people and also especially subscribe to Caesar and stay tuned for his episode coming next week. So yeah, I hope you guys are going to enjoy the little cinematics at the end of this build. See you guys in the next one. I hope you enjoyed. Bye-bye.